Hello and welcome to Lightworks. In this video we're going to have a look at how Lightworks manages your media and we're also going to take a look how to fix things when there's a problem. First of all we need to understand what exactly a Lightworks media space is. The Lightworks media spaces are managed by clicking on your project name at the top left to open the project card. Click on the media tab on the left hand side. All the entries you see in this list are Lightworks media spaces. By default, we'll always place a folder on your system drive called Media, and it's going to be at this path. If we just take a look at our Explorer, this is the Lightworks Media Space. Its default path under Windows here is C Users Public Documents Lightworks Media. Wherever you see the two folders, Material and Sound, this is the Lightworks Media Space that's registered in the project card. Video files go in the material folder and sound files go in the sound folder. Let's do some importing and see what files we create. On my system drive, Lightworks Media folder. As I'm sure you're aware, there's three ways you can import media into Lightworks. Create Link, Copy Local or Transcode. Let's first have a look at Create Link. I'm going to take this file and import it with Create Link. I've set my content manager to display in list view. I'm showing the name column, the media location, as far as Lightworks is concerned, and the cookie. A cookie is a .ed5, and it's a file that Lightworks makes in your project folder to reference the shot. We've imported a file called create link, and Lightworks understands this path to be linked from the Lightworks media folder to the actual file, and that's the file path there. If we reopen the material and sound folders on my C drive, let's have a look what's been created inside. First, the material folder. We've got this shot here. Now, you can see that's a very small file, 512 bytes. This is a link file. If I edit this file in Notepad, the information contained in it is this link here. This is the path to the actual media that Lightworks is referencing. The link file points to this path and that's what this means here. In our media space called media the file is linked to its actual path here. I can reveal the source media simply by clicking this link and there it is. That's the actual file. If I open the shot into a viewer I can also click on the file card and the media location is exactly the same as we see in the bin. Again this is a hyperlink. Click it to reveal the linked file. Let's just return to our material sound folders. The cookie name is actually related to the files that are produced in the material and sound folders. This shot log cookie is EJ0K0060, the file that's made in the material folder is prefixed with a V for video. So this link file is VJ0K0060. Now this shot does have audio tracks, so if we have a quick look in the sound folder, we've got two sound files. Again, they're related to the cookie name. They're always prefixed with SJ and then an audio channel number. So SJ channel 1 K0060 and SJ channel 2 K0060 all relate back to this shot. And again, these are the same link files, but just for the audio data. Tiny files again, 512 bytes, with a link to the original media. By the way, you can find out cookie numbers of shots just by hovering on the viewer frame as well, and the information will come up. Let's do another import. This time, a copy local. So a copy local import copies your source media and makes a video file and audio files in your material and sound folders. We see slightly different information now on the media location column. But this shot is in the Lightworks media space called Media. Again, you can hyperlink, click to reveal. This time, we actually have a real media file. Our source has been copied. We've still got the same file references. In Lightworks, this shot's cookie is EJ0K0062. Again, VJ0 K0062 for the video file. And we've got two channels of media in the sound folder.
prefixed with SJ, then the channel number, then the rest of the cookie ED5 name. Let's go back to Lightworks and do a transcode import, see what happens. There it is. And we get similar information for a transcode. The source media's format has been converted according to my transcode settings in Lightworks. And again, Lightworks has made full media files in my material and sound folders. Cookie 0064 at the end there. 0064, that's the actual file. And in the sound folder, sound channels 1 and 2 have been extracted in that folder. I've got a USB 3 drive that I use to hold just my video material. I don't really want video on my system drive if I can help it. Let's add a USB video drive to my Lightworks media locations. Add the J drive. And I've already made a folder called USB drive Lightworks media. Our material and sound folders are going to be created in there. Now we've got two entries in the list. Back to the import tool. I've actually got some media in a media folder on the external J drive. That's in this folder, USB drive video files. Same shots again. First of all, we're going to import the file called external hard disk drive link to file. I'm going to import it just before I do that on the import settings menu. I'm going to set my destination. I'm going to tell Lightworks to manage this media my media path USB drive Lightworks media. These entries here reflect exactly the media locations list in your project card. I'm going to set that to my external drive and that setting will stick now so I can keep things all being driven to the USB drive. Import create link. Now the file is referenced by a link file that's in a folder called USB drive Lightworks media and it links to a file on the same USB drive the J drive here. So if we just open up our Explorer, I go to my J drive, Lightworks Media, there's the material and sound folders. Open up the video folder, one link file's been created there, and I know what shot it references 006x on the cookie ED5, 006x in the bin up there. And as usual, link files for sound channel 1 and sound channel 2 have been created. Back to the import tool, copy local, external drive copy local file, import, there it is, same situation, the actual media now resides in this Lightworks media location, I can just click that link to reveal the shot. Import tool, let's do a transcode, and we're just repeating what we've already done on the system drive. What I'm going to do now is disconnect my external drive, closing Lightworks first. Re-entering the project, we've got some problems. All of these files here represents the import I just did from my external drive. Lightworks actually has no idea where they are at all. It has no link files and it has no actual media. In our media locations tab, my external drive doesn't exist anymore up there. So if I plug my external drive back in again, everything will be fine. All my media will be back online. When you reconnect an external drive with the Lightworks media location on it, you need to restart the application. Back in the project, everything that was managed on the external drive is all back in order and we've got all the information we need. But what happens if you plug in your external drive and the drive letter changes when the operating system redetects it? I'm going to quickly change my external drive from the J drive to the K drive. Let's see what happens when we relaunch Lightworks. Now Lightworks hasn't reconnected to our media location space or the Link2 media either. What I need to do is just check in my media management list to make sure that there is actually an entry in there that tells the application to scan the media location that's contained now on my K drive. That media location path is USB drive Lightworks media. That's okay. We'll restart the application. Back in the project, we've got our copy local and our transcode shots. The link file we initially made contains the information that it should be linking to a file that's on the J drive. I need to tell Lightworks that this file is actually at the same place, but it's on the K drive. And now I'm going to use relink. 
Relink is a function in Lightworks that only updates the link files for material that has been imported via Create Link. You won't be able to use Relink on material that is imported copy local or transcode. You just need to make sure that the Lightworks media location that contains the media is in your project card and the drive is connected. So if I just right click in this bin, choose Relink Missing Media, I'm going to tell Lightworks that actual file is now on a drive called K in the same folder in my USB drive video files folder that contains the source shot. Open that up, press OK. The link file will be updated, the material is back online and that's great. So you'd use that relink function if you'd actually moved media around between folders and drives or the drive letters changed which is much the same thing. Now finally let's have a look at what file Lightworks was using to scan all these paths as you enter projects. If you go to the details tab we can click on the project location and open up the Lightworks projects folder. In the root folder of the projects folder is a file called defnetdrive.txt. Have a look inside this file. This is the list of registered Lightworks media locations that the software is scanning each time you enter a project. The one at the top is our default system drive media path. Then remember we added the J drive as a USB drive, but we also changed the drive letter and re-added that in the manage media locations as a K drive. And Lightworks remembers all the paths you register in media locations and stores them in this file. Finally, I'm gonna take all these shots, select them all, I'm gonna right click and delete them. I'm gonna delete all the shot logs and the associated media files that goes with them. This means that the link files will be deleted from your material and sound folders and the actual media that you've imported with copy local and transcode will be deleted from the material and sound folders. Now if I hit yes, we check back in our system drive material folder and sound folder, both empty. And also on my external drive, USB drive media space, I see that the material folder and the sound folder are both empty. But we're never going to delete your actual source media that was used in any of those import processes. Here's my source media still safely in its folder on both my C drive and my external drive. And that's all cleaned out and we're back to the beginning again. So to summarize, here's some hints and tips to help you keep on top of your media management. So if you decide on suitable drives that are going to permanently contain your Lightworks media locations and stick to those, that's really going to help. If you haven't got external drives, that's fine. You're only ever going to have your system drive registered in your media locations. But if you do have better drives available, we recommend separating the OS operation from video media replay and leaving your system drive just to handle program-based operations. So if you do choose to add a dedicated drive other than your system drive, you could then use the remove button on the Lightworks project card media locations and delete the system drive media location from the project card media tab. If you are going to add an external drive for your video replay and you've got a few external drive, perhaps consider actually physically labeling the drive as a Lightworks drive, or you can always use the operating system drive naming management disk management control panel, but also you can rename in the Lightworks media location panel itself. And perhaps also make a note of your preferred drive letter when you first add the Lightworks external drive to avoid having to re-add it to the media locations list if the drive is detected and assigned another letter. And remember, when you're using the import tool, if a drive letter has recently changed when you've added a drive back or you're adding a new location for the first time, just remember to recheck on the COGS settings menu in the import panel to check the destination where you are actually going to drive your media to prior to pressing the import button. It's good practice anyway to keep one eye on this setting prior to importing, even though the setting should persist uh, once set in normal circumstances. Also worth noting is if you are mainly working with Create Link and you're linking to the source media where it resides on your file system, it's worth actually considering implementing a sensible folder structure too, so your files are always going to be easy to find should you ever need to relink media imported by Create Link and that you've actually moved that source material to another file path. So we hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching.